guys, it's Jessica from Peace Love Books, and today I'm here with a video I'm super excited for. It's the first of a few videos where I read the best of 2021 according to something, and today I decided to read the top 25 romances according to BuzzFeed. So BuzzFeed put out this article, and it was called Here Are the Best Romance Novels of 2021. Now, I didn't want to do Goodreads. I've done Goodreads for the past two or three years, and I got tired of seeing the same books every time, and this list had at least a few different romances that I was actually really excited to read, though I'm still frustrated that these same authors show up on the romance list every single year and I'm like is Christina Lauren really still writing the top romances of the year because their past like four releases have not been it for me and I highly disagree but I will get to these books and tell you my thoughts and I will say it's just the nature of publishing most of these have illustrated covers but what made me so excited about this list is there were some actual historical romances on here one that I was disappointed was on this list, but the rest I was like, thank you for including some historical romances, though only one of those had the classic historical romance cover, so that did kind of disappoint me a bit, but there are 25 books on this list. I think I'd already read about 15 or 16 throughout the year, and there were only about 9 or 10 that I had to read. I did DNF one, and I just did not pick up another one because I knew I would not enjoy it, so I technically read 23 and 20 pages of these books. It was that bad I only got through 20 pages, but I'll go ahead and get to to these romances and let you know my thoughts and if I agree that they are the best of 2021. Coming in at number one, I don't know if these are ranked on this list. The first book on this list I have is The Fastest Way to Fall by Denise Williams. I had actually just read this before I decided to do this video because I love Denise Williams. In this book, I gave four and a half stars. Our heroine is actually a journalist and she's going undercover on this exercise app. And what I loved about this book is that she wants to get into exercise just to feel good about herself, to feel strong and just to feel like a healthier person and not necessarily to get skinny. That is not her goal and I love that this book had that goal in mind is to just feel healthier and that's why she joined the app but she is competing with another journalist and the other journalist is using a different exercise app and so she's trying to write her best and have the best stories so that she can get promoted over her co-worker and what happens is she starts falling for her coach who also happens to be the owner of the app but it's kind of a pistolary because they text back and forth a lot and so it starts out as just a texting friendship. It's definitely friends to lovers. I thought this was so good. I loved how protective he was over her. The minute he heard she was in trouble, he dropped everything, tracked her down, and helped her. And I love that about a hero. He will literally drop everything to save you. And it was just so good. And I liked how secrets were revealed, but they weren't too annoying. Like sometimes you can tell from a mile away what the conflict is going to be because you know it's going to be a conflict, but this didn't follow the stereotypical paths, which I really loved. So this one, another hit from this author. Her last book was one of my favorites of this year as well, and so I just love this author, and this is definitely a hit for me. The next one is one I hadn't read yet because it is a more recent release, and I listened to this on audio, and that is All the Feels by Olivia Dade. Spoiler alert was actually on my top reads of last year, so I had super high expectations going to this one, but I gave it three stars. This one was actually really disappointing to me because our hero, he was just so weird around her. Her. So he's a, an actor and he gets into a lot of trouble and so she is hired to be his like handler So just make sure he stays out of trouble and he's instantly fixated on her body and the shape of it And he's constantly making comments about her body shape and how she looks like a bird and he's trying to figure out what bird she reminds him of and I'm just like you're so annoying I would have been so annoyed being around someone who was constantly talking about my body shape and what it reminded him of and why he was so fixated on it but then like later on in the book someone else comments on her body and he gets mad and it's like it's the kind of like I can only make fun of you and no one else can and I did not find that endearing whatsoever and this was way too long the first half of this book it had a really really hard time getting into I just really was not a fan and I almost DNF'd it but I know my friend Rachel from Rachel Reads and Sing said it got better for her and I think she ended up giving it four stars so I decided to continue on and, and read the rest of it but I still gave this one a three star this one I just couldn't get behind that romance after that just awkward start and him being so weird around her and about her body and I never felt that connection between them I feel like we were supposed to believe they were falling in love and had this romantic connection and I still saw them as just like platonic friends and I never felt that romance between them so this one was a miss for me I still love the first book spoiler alert 
thriller, but I did not love the romance in All the Feels. The next one actually ended up being an all-time favorite of mine of the year. It was on my top 10 books of 2021, actually top 12. I ended up adding a 12 to that list, but it is The Charm Offensive. This one is an MM romance. It's a forbidden romance, and it's like a bachelor-type romance. So our hero, I think his name was Charlie. He is coming on to Prince Charming, which is like The Bachelor, and it's because he needs to fix his reputation. And so there's actually two bachelor-type romances on this list, and I love them both because they both dealt with the fact that these reality shows are not actually actually for finding love and they're actually for promoting yourself and promoting some ideals or something and trying to just make a name for yourself and so that's what this one definitely talked about and so Dev is our handler so he I believe he was a producer but he is in charge of handling Charlie he's like his assistant he makes sure everything goes the way it should be he's where he should be and they end up like having to room together as well and stay in a house together and they fall for each other and it is so fabulous it's definitely a friends to lovers more slow but Charlie was so endearing. He has OCD and anxiety and he actually lost his previous job because of it and so he's known as being like really hard to work with so he wants to fix that image. That's what he goes on the show but he's never really been super attracted to a woman before and so he's so nervous being on the show and like being around these women he's not really feeling any romantic connection to any of them and then he starts feeling romantic feelings for Dev so they really explore his sexuality they really explore his OCD and anxiety Dev also deals with the depression so they really delve into that if that is not something you can read please don't pick up this book because it really delves deeply into both of their personal lives and what they're dealing with with their depression anxiety OCD sexuality all of that so make sure in the right headspace going into this but it was the cutest romance I have read how they started falling for each other and they didn't want to be away from each other but then they're like what's the end game here are you actually going to propose to someone on the show can we go through a lie and like act like you're engaged for six months before you can break up and then we can get together like dealing with all of that it was just so good one of the best kind of bachelor-esque romances that I've read and I loved everything about it. So adorable. Could not recommend this one enough and I'm so happy I picked it up. The next one's The Dating Plan by Sarah Desai and this one unfortunately I didn't end up loving. I gave this one three stars. This one our heroine works in tech and I just remember I actually read this one a long time ago. I read it back in like June or July I think. I think I read it in the summer and so she is at like a tech conference and she needs to be fake dating someone so she makes out with this guy she used to know who stood her up for prom and then they have to fake date and what I could not get behind in this book. I know it's insignificant but I latch onto those things in my books. So he actually stood her up to prom when they were in high school and she never talked to him again. She doesn't know why he did that and so now it took us like 60 or 70 percent into the book to figure out why he stood her up and I'm like I would have asked the second we reconnected we're like why did you stand me up to prom we need to get this out of the out of the way clear the air and then we can see what we are from here on out she doesn't do that and I'm like girl hold a grudge he broke your heart in high school and you're not going to ask him about it until 60% into the book so that really bothered me but I just didn't really love the whole fake dating aspect of this romance it was just okay and I thought it was odd she would like make out with someone in the middle of a business conference as someone who is a working adult that's weird so I didn't really love this book I gave it three stars it wasn't bad but it was not my favorite the next one is one that I loved as well it's actually my first read of 2022 and it is a book I've seen everywhere and this was on the Goodreads list as well and I was surprised because I did not know this was a romance the cover is not your typical cliche like this is gonna be one of them like illustrated cover that all all literally every book I have next to me is an illustrated cover it is not like that and I adore this cover. I wish more romances did this. Now there are a couple books on this list that read more women's fiction but definitely are still romance and so I feel like this list does a better job of Goodreads too knowing what a romance is so good job BuzzFeed but this one is Seven Days in June and I feel like this kind of blew up then at the end of the year at least what I've seen on social media when it was on a lot of lists and people finally realized like oh this is a romance and I know some of my friends were like I didn't know this was a romance and so I have seen a few of my book two friends pick this up and love it I was really excited to read it my audiobook actually finally came in it was months away and it like all of a sudden showed up so I was like oh awesome I'm gonna listen to this and this was a five-star read for me this was so so good it's two writers Eva's our main character and she is actually a romance writer she writes like vampire erotica romance 
kids and she like accidentally fell in the career but she's wanting to write this book that like speaks to her soul but she doesn't know how to get out of writing her romance series that made her famous and she's a single mother and I loved her daughter so much and our hero is Shane who is like a literary fiction writer. He wins all these awards but he's super mysterious. He's actually a recovering alcoholic. He used to be into drugs. Our heroine deals with a chronic illness and she used to self-harm. Know that going in that this deals with a lot of heavy topics and our hero and our heroine had met back in high school and spent seven days together. So what is a second chance romance? And they're uncovering what had happened to them when they left each other because they haven't seen each other since and Shane pops back up into Eva's life and I loved this so much. It was so heavy and our both of our characters have to navigate who they are, where they've come from, and where they want to be and Shane is not used to people relying on him or being there for other people and so it's heartbreaking what he goes through and how Eva's daughter's involved and Eva confronting her mom about things and this is so heavy and this definitely I can see reads more women's fiction but the romance is there. There is an HEA so it is a romance and I just really adore the story and everything it told and I love that they were both writers and how we had this magical but also very dark seven days that they spent together and where they are now. So this one, absolute five out of five stars. Definitely recommend and I'm so happy to see this on all of these best of lists. Okay, the next one was the one that I read right after Seven Days in June and I was actually really excited for this book. The publisher did send it to me but I haven't liked this author's books before. I will say the writing was better this time around than when I read her book before. That is King of Battle and Blood by Scarlett St. Clair. I think this is the lowest book other than the DNF I've, I've put on this list. I gave it two and a half stars. It was pitched to me as vampire romance, marriage of convenience, she wants to murder him. There's like no plot until the end. This book is almost 400 pages and all the action was at the end and all the plot was at the end. Our heroine has to marry him and her father and her people want her to kill him. He is a vampire king. So much was not developed or even discussed in here. There was this hunting that was supposed to be really mysterious but it was really in there so that people could sleep together in public and I was just like there's no point to this and it like didn't have anything like culminating about it. It was just like oh here's the hunting. All these people are getting together and now we're moving on and I'm like what was the point of that and like it's very steamy like her and him have a definite chemistry together and they they have steamy times a lot and that's all this book was. I was so disappointed. I wanted so much more plot. I wanted so much more action. This took me forever to read because I was so bored by it. I was like, nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. So I gave this two and a half stars. I think I rounded it up to three on Goodreads, but as a fantasy romance, it was so disappointing. I did like the writing better than The Touch of Darkness, I think was the other book that she wrote, but definitely disappointing to me. I was just not that big of a fan of this. One that I was really excited uh, to see on this list. Let me find it. This one I actually really enjoyed. So I just went four stars and I was surprised it was on this list because not a lot of people like this book and that is Second First Impressions by Sally Thorne. I have loved everything Sally Thorne writes. I really enjoyed The Hating Game when it came out. I don't know if it would stand up now if I read it, but the second book, oh, uh, what was it called? 99% Mine. I really enjoyed that one and Second First Impressions I thought was the most adorable romance ever. Our heroine works at a retirement home and our hero is the son of the owner of the retirement home and decides to work there. I think he has to like prove something. I don't remember. It's been a while since I read this, but this was adorable. So she, he mistakes her for an old lady because she wears like very sensible clothes and things that like old ladies wear. She doesn't really go out a lot. She just like is a very much a homebody, works all the time. And he is this young, I'm pretty sure he has long hair. He rides a motorcycle and like is everything she's not, but it is the sweetest friends to lovers romance. And I loved the whole atmosphere of this retirement home that they're working at. There's this really hilarious couple that they have to deal with a lot and I'm pretty sure he like does maintenance or something around and he gets roped into things with that couple and it was just adorable. This was so cute. I really enjoyed it. Oh, I think I actually gave this five stars. I don't know why I said four. On my list, I wrote down five. I just really love this one. I think it's super underrated and I'm glad it was on this list because it's, like I said, adorable. The next one I had never gotten around to and I remember having the audiobook out and returning it because I didn't get to it and I'm happy that I finally picked it up. That is Hana Khan Carries On. This one is really fun because it's You've Got Mail Retelling. So if you know that, it's kind of obvious where the plot's going to go. Our heroine's Hana and she really loves radio. So she has an internship at a radio station, but she also has her own podcast that she loves and there's a listener that she's gotten really close to that they've chatted a lot so it's kind of like epistolary like you've got mail and they 
get along really well and she's kind of crushing on him but they don't know who each other are and then she actually helps out her parents restaurant that's really not doing well and this man and his son come in and they are actually building a competing restaurant right across across the street and they're really rude and she really does not hit it off well with the son it is you've got mail hint hint and so the story goes on from there but this actually delves so much more into Hannah's life than the romance. The romance really took secondary to the plot, but I still really like this. I gave it four stars. I really liked Hannah's journey of wanting to go into radio, but still wanting to support her family. And I loved how supportive her family was, though. They didn't really hate the fact that she was in radio. They supported her 100% and wanted her to achieve her dreams. She also has her sister, who's pregnant, that's dealing with a really rough time with her pregnancy. And then we have her family coming and visiting, and then her encountering a racist experience and it really delves into the racism she faces in Canada and exploring those issues and so this dealt with a lot but I really enjoyed it I really love the relationships in here I wanted a little bit more from the romance and that's why I gave it four stars but I actually appreciated the rest of the book so much that I enjoyed it a lot and it was a fun hate to love romance too but just know going into this one it definitely reads more women's fiction than romance in general now on to the not so great so I read 20 pages of the seat filler by Sarah Wilson I got it from the library and I was not getting into this book whatsoever so our heroine is hired to be the seat filler at an award show and it's supposed to be like inspired by the author's experience with Adam Driver and then I was looking up reviews and apparently she uses like very minute details about Adam Driver for this book and it's like self insert fan fiction which is very different than like what um the love hypothesis is which I'll talk about in a little bit this is Raylo fan fiction so it's it's supposed to be Ray and um Kylo Ren right not like literal Adam Driver though she does name the character Adam and so I was just like weirded out by that and I read the acknowledgments which are which are bizarre and I've there's tweets about it if you want to go on Twitter and look at it, but the heroine was so annoying. Like, I was only 20 pages in, and I was like, this heroine, I cannot stand her. The writing was super cheesy, and, like, it was trying too hard to be funny, and I was like, I don't think I'm going to even like this, and it's 2022. It is the year of DNF. I am going to not read a book I don't like, and I'm going to stop picking up books just because other people like them, so, which is like, why did I do this list then? But that made me want to put this book down, so I did. Nothing was inspiring me to read this more. She's a dog groomer, but like I didn't even like that about her, even though I love books with dogs. So her interaction with the the actor in this book was just so weird and annoying. Like she sits down in a seat that she's a seat filler for and he sits, he's like, you're in my, my date's way. And then she was like, oh, you're, and he's like, don't call me my character name. She's like, why are you going to assume that I know who you are? I was like, you were literally about to tell him who he was. And then he, he acknowledges it and then you get mad. And it was like, this is so dumb. Like she was being so rude to him for no reason. And I just did not love it. So DNF this one. And it's odd this was on this list because I've not seen a single person include this on any list in 2021 and I don't know anybody who's read it of my friends so I was intrigued enough to read it and excited that maybe this is like a hidden gem. It was not. Okay I still have a lot to go. I'm gonna try to speed it up a little bit but the next one actor A.G. Brown. I think this is on everybody's list. I gave it four and a half stars. It was definitely a really adorable romance because Eve is just this wild card person and Jacob is not. He is very straight laced he is very by the book and Eve drives him nuts but then she drives him nuts in a good way and they fall for each other and I didn't love though the fact this was, was so enclosed like it all took place at the bed and breakfast that they worked at and I would have liked like something more to happen it was just like a very sweet romance I gave it four and a half stars book two is still my favorite but I wholeheartedly agree about the series I love it I get why it's on everybody's top of the year Okay, the next one is another author that I feel like is on every list every year since her debut book, and that's Life's Too Short by Abby Jimenez. This one was just okay to me. I think I gave it three and a half stars. I did not love, and I was watching Brie from Eleven Words review on this and how complicated my feelings are towards it because it does talk about her and how she thinks that she has, this doesn't say it in the Buzzly feed list, but she thinks she has a chronic illness that her mother and I think her sister got and they died from, and so she's like 100 
100% sure she's gonna die in her 30s and she is a travel vlogger but she is stuck taking care of a sister's child who's a baby. The hero is living next door and he comes over to help and then they strike up a friendship that turns into more and so I was really frustrated with our heroine how she was not actually trying to seek out help for this chronic illness she thought she had. She refused to get tested and it, this did the same exact thing the friend zone did which is the first book with the ending and that makes me so annoyed like I love the friend zone except for the ending I felt was really insensitive and frustrating to have this entire book and then have that ending I don't want to spoil anything if you know what happens you know what I'm talking about this is the same exact thing and I was like why write this whole book if you're gonna do that at the end like it just feels pointless and like insensitive it wasn't my favorite kind of single parent romance ever, so I gave it three and a half stars. Okay, then we're getting to a historical romance, and this one I read also like over Christmas time. That's The Devil and the Heiress by Harper St. George, and I absolutely love this one. I gave it five stars, and I liked it better than the first book. I gave the first book four stars, but this one, so good. Our heroine is an heiress, so we have tons of men wanting to marry her. She's an American heiress, and so our hero actually needs money, and he wants to marry her, and so he decides to kidnap her without her knowing, so she wants to run away. She's like, I'm not going to be forced into a marriage. I'm going to run away, and he's like, I'll help you run away. He's really wanting to take her to Scotland to get married, and she doesn't know that, and so they're traveling together, and they're falling for each other, and then he's like, oh crap, Crap. I can't force her to marry me. I'm like actually having real feelings for her and that's what the book is about. It's so good. I really love their journey together. I love a good travel historical romance and it was just really good. I love this so much. I could not stop loving their connection together and how he had like ulterior motives but also started falling for her so I'm happy this is on this list definitely gave us one five stars then the next one literally is on everybody's list that's people we meet on vacation by Emily Henry this is a friends to lovers second chance romance I gave it four stars I actually preferred beach read this one our hero and heroine travel a lot she's a travel journalist and so they get to go around together and it's their second chance because something happened on their last vacation and they stopped talking to each other and now I think it's a couple years later they're traveling together again and they have to confront what happened I don't like books that have a secret that doesn't come out until after 50% of the book and it's lackluster I was like that's what happened in the past really that's really disappointing and there was so much miscommunication in here if they had just talked to each other they wouldn't have had that break together they wouldn't have had what they're going on here and even when they like decide to get back together they still don't talk to each other which adds like another conflict to the plot and I'm not someone who loves miscommunication it was cute I gave it four stars but it was not like the most amazing romance that everybody says it is I don't know if I would even put this on a favorites list it was just like good it was even closer to a three and a half star like it was cute but like that's our conflict. So I wasn't as impressed in this one, but I loved Beach Read. So that's why I think I didn't love this as much because I like the first book better. Another one on everybody's list is It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. I gave this one three stars. This one I was also very disappointed in. I didn't like Piper, our heroine. She was this party girl. She breaks into hotels with real parties and she's worried about her image. I don't care. And so then she's shipped off by her stepdad to this bar in this coastal town to like rebuild it because like, her dad, her like birth father owned it, but he passed away. And she meets Brendan, who I really loved Brendan's character. I really enjoyed him. He was very grumpy. He is a widower and he's a fisherman, but this got very to love even though it was like hate to love it they got together really fast and I was like what what is the point of the rest of the book like what's gonna happen the conflict was a very obvious conflict I don't love obvious conflicts when you're just waiting literally from like 20% in for it to happen at like 80% and so this one just was too formulaic for me and too predictable I didn't love the heroine so I gave this one three stars I wasn't that impressed the next one I almost didn't read because I don't really love this author and it is while we were dating by Jasmine Guillory this is another author I feel like is just put on every list no matter what she writes and I'm like was it really the best of the year I ended up giving it a shot it's fake dating it's a Hollywood romance he works in advertising I think and she is an actress and they meet because he's giving a pitch for something she's working on and then they have a one-night stand and it goes from there they got a fake date I gave this three stars there's really nothing special about this book and I didn't really feel that big of a connection between them I feel like she was the one driving the relationship and how I feel like she was selfish it, everything was about her and where she was going and not a lot was about him she does deal with anxiety though so I 
did like that aspect. This one was just like, I, I don't know. I just like couldn't connect with the characters. They ended up having to fake date. She almost didn't tell him she was going to fake date him, which I thought was a little rude. And, but then she did. And then he was still like mad that she wasn't going to tell him. And it was just like, okay, I wasn't connected to any of these characters. It was just like a fake dating romance and I'm not loving fake dating, though I did love the other fake dating book on here, but like other than that, fake dating I feel like is very overdone lately, so it was just alright. Three out of five stars, nothing special. Another one that I almost didn't read but decided to read for this video is Isn't It Romantic by Lissa K. Adams. These are getting too corny and cheesy and this is the Russians book who I was so over by the, is this the fourth book or the third one? I I think this is the fourth one. I didn't love book two or book three. I loved book one, but this one, The Russian, has just been so over the top. This is his book. It's the, like, after effects of A Marriage of Convenience. They haven't really talked. They got married so his best friend could move to the U.S. because he's Russian. She's Russian. She's a journalist. Her dad disappeared working on a human trafficking piece. She's picking it back up, and he gets injured, so that's what reconnects them, and it was just so over the top. Like, there was this cheese man that they had to go to, and, like, he was getting jealous of the cheese man with his wife and I'm just like this is so weird like I didn't think anything was funny or endearing and I, I was just like put off by it and I didn't love the romance they were both just being frustrating and they could just talk to each other and it was just okay I gave it three stars I didn't love it another miss in this series I'm probably gonna stop reading the series finally I was gonna stop at this book but now I've read it so not that impressed the next one was a surprise. It's If the Shoe Fits by Julie Murphy. I give this one five stars. I loved it so, so much. The ending could have used a little bit of work, but it's another Bachelor retelling. Our heroine went to design school. She has her stepmom and her step-siblings, which are stepsisters. Then she has three half-siblings that were born after her dad passed away, and they're named after the mice from Cinderella, which I think is so funny. This is a Cinderella retelling, but she loves her stepmom. Her stepmom, I think, is the producer of a dating show like The Bachelor, and our heroine and her two sisters go on the show. Show. And the guy on the show was the guy that she sat next to on the plane on the way there. And it's their romance. I loved everything about this. It was so fun and entertaining. I loved her friendship with all the girls on the show and how we have the villain and the commentary on like dating shows like that and her talking about being a plus size woman and having not as much access, even especially on the show. She's like, you knew I was going to be here. There was a clothing challenge and nothing fits me. And so I really liked that whole discussion and I loved our heroine. I loved their relationship. The ending, I think, went a little bit too quickly for me. I would have liked that see that a little bit more but this was a pleasant surprise I really love this one five stars another one that I've already read is the heart principle by Helen Huang this is book three it is Quan's story we finally got it I think we were waiting two years for this one I absolutely adore this. This one, though, definitely reads more women's fiction. Our heroine's dealing a lot with family problems and taking care of an ill loved one. So know that it is very, very heavy. If you have at all any sensitivity towards taking care of a sick parent, don't pick this up because our heroine has to deal with that. She got out of a relationship and her boyfriend's like, we should see other people. And she's like freaking out because like, they've been together for so long and so she tries to have a one-night stand with Quan, and she doesn't go through with it but they end up seeing each other more I loved Quan's character he was so patient with our heroine and the romance was so good so this read more like a romance for the first half but then we have the parent fall ill and she really has to take care of him but Quan is there for her 100% and it was adorable I love this one. I think I like, I don't know if I liked it more than book two. I don't know if this is my favorite, but definitely very serious, made me want to cry, and I loved how nothing was wrapped up in a nice neat bow at the end. Like, it was reality, and I just love this book. Five stars. The next one I decided not to pick up. So, I know my friend Jen from the book Refuge detested this book. She got really angry at it, and I actually DNF'd book two in this series, and I enjoy book one enough, but it is The Portrait of a Scotsman by Evie Dunmore. This is where I'm annoyed that this is really the only historical romance we see on top lists of the year, and it has to be Evie Dunmore, which is trade paperback with a traditional cover of the illustrated cover, and I don't want to read it, and I know Jen hated it. I'm not a fan of this author anymore, and so going into 2022, I was like, I'm not gonna waste my time. So, I did not pick this one up. I would have liked to see other really good historical romances with the classic clinch cover show up on this list, like this one is, but I I didn't read this one. Next, The Love Hypothesis by Ellie Hazelwood. I give it five stars. Like, I feel like I don't need to talk about this because I've talked about it a lot. It's on my top 12 romances of the year list. It's fake dating, but done so well. They're in academia. He's a professor and she is a PhD student. He is grumpy and misunderstood. Like, all the tropes in here, throw them together, 
and make it just adorable. I love this. I loved how she was slowly getting to know him and how adorable they are. It is weird how they act in a professional setting. So like she sits on his lap during a speaker because there weren't enough seats, which like you wouldn't do. But I didn't mind it as much in this one. I just really love this. I gave it five stars. I can't rave about it enough. Another surprising one. This one was one I read that only because of this list. I had it, I had the audiobook, but I never got around to it because I didn't love the first book by this author. One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston's A Sapphic Romance. It's kind of sci-fi, and I actually really love that. So I just, I love this book so much. August has moved to New York City. She's a student. She is renting out an apartment. She has new roommates. She's working at a diner, and she meets Jane on the subway, and she's really into her. But then she starts noticing Jane's wearing the same outfit every time, and Jane is on the same train no matter what time it is, every time August gets on. Jane's from the 70s, so I love this so much. I love their romance and how they just were really into each other. And then they realized, I don't know if this can work. And figuring out who Jane is, how to get her unstuck, and the ending was just perfect. I gave this five stars. I just was so enamored with this romance and everything they were dealing with, and I loved how there's that secondary plot of how do we get you uh, not on this train anymore? Would you even be here in the future? I don't know, and so it was just so good. I loved it so much, and we have like little snippets of people throughout the years who've seen Jane on the train, the subway, and I really love that, seeing her and how she's affected people throughout the years. This was just so good. Five out of five stars. I'm so happy I read this. I loved it. One that's super hyped that I didn't really love, I gave it three and a half stars, Neon Gods by Katie Robert. I love Hades and Persephone retellings, but this one, I couldn't tell what it wanted to be. Was it contemporary? Was it fantasy? There wasn't enough world building for it to be fantasy, but I think it was supposed to be. Hades is the, like, nemesis of Zeus, and Zeus is supposed to marry Persephone, because her mom, like, set that up. So Persephone's like, I don't want to marry Zeus, runs across the river, and needs to fake date Hades. And fake date, I mean do things in public together. It's very steamy, but I feel like there wasn't enough like urgency in here that she was running from Zeus and needing to get out of a bad situation. It just felt like it was convenient for her. That's why she's over here with, with Hades. And like, I was like, where is the plot going? Like, what is the point? And it just needed so much more to the story that I was missing, so I gave it three and a half stars. I did enjoy the romance. Like, I actually really loved Hades and how into Persephone he was. Like, that was the best part of this book, but it just needed more to the plot. Then we have another radio book, which I'm loving books about radio lately, and that is The X Talk. I actually listened to this earlier this year, and I absolutely love this. Five out of five stars. It's, like, kind of fake dating, but not. They're fake exes, which is even better. Then there's first proximity, because then they have to go on a vacation together to get to know each each other to really be like exes. It's age gap. He's younger. She's older. He's new to the radio station, but take him more seriously because he's a guy in a male dominated industry. And so they have to be exes because it's this new pitch for this radio show. And she just wants to be on the radio. So they agree to do it, even though it goes against their journalistic integrity and fall for each other. And I just really love that twist on fake dating. They're not fake dating. They're fake exes because they banter really well together. And everyone's like, it, we would totally believe your exes. And so so you know it's gonna come out, but I didn't mind. I really liked how the author dealt with the fact that it came out that they weren't exes, and this was just such a good romance. I gave it five stars. So unique. I love the radio show aspect, like with Hana Khan carries on, but the romance was more strong in this one, and I really like that, and they really do dislike each other, which was really fun. So five out of five stars for this one. I really enjoyed it. Then we have The Lady Gets Lucky by Joanna Shoup, which actually was not on my favorite historical romances of 2021, but it was close. This one is a five star for me, but I read so many five-star historical romances. That's why this was not on my list, but this one is a lessons in seduction romance. Our heroine needs to find a husband that's not after her money, so she approaches Kit, who is known for his womanizing ways. He's, they're at a house party together. He's already been around to some of the women there, and so she's like, I need you to teach me how to be seductive. And at first she's like, no, but then she's actually a chef, which I love that about her. And she's like, I will help get you the recipes from this renowned chef for your supper club you want to open. So they agree and it's lessons in seduction and it's so good. It's kind of forbidden because he is definitely lower class than her. He's not someone of high standing that her mom wants her to marry. And it was just so good. I really love this one. Five stars. I'm so happy this was on this list. Joanna Shoup just writes the best romances and I just could 
gonna get enough of this. So if you read any historical romances, you have to pick this one up. I'm also obsessed with the cover so much. Like it's so pretty and I love that we have this clinch cover still, but I love this. I gave it five stars. The last one is The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren. I gave this three stars. I haven't loved anything they've written since The Unhoneymooners. It was just okay. Our heroine is, I believe, a single mom and it's like this dating app, which I'm really over dating app romances. I feel like they've just been so oversaturated in the past like two or three years and you like genetically get matched with people and she's matched with the owner of the company and they don't really get along and it's their romance and I honestly forget so much about this plot. It was that forgettable. I read it in the summer. I barely remember anything. I remember the plot twist and I was really not impressed with the plot twist in here and so I gave it three stars. I didn't love it. I'm annoyed that they keep on, like, I love Christina Lauren. I love them as people. I love some of their older books, but they have not been writing things really well lately. They're very watered down and definitely more fade to black than usual, too, and I'm just, like, not loving them, and I'm surprised but not that they keep on ending up on these lists. I wish people making these lists would move past author names and go towards good books that are not necessarily the hyped ones that are bought for name value and I would have also loved to see many more indie romances on this list. I don't think we had a single independently published romance on this list and a majority of my top reads of the year were independently published. So BuzzFeed if you're listening, which you're probably not, but please please look into independently published books as well. They are as good if not better than traditionally published books but those are my thoughts I didn't really have anything else to say about the soulmate equation those are my thoughts on the 25 books I read because of BuzzFeed I feel like it was half and half half the books I did get four or five stars half of them I gave three or less so I would love to see us move away from the illustrated cover move away from the not clinch cover romances because we only had one clinch historical romance on here but I was very happy to see that I'm really happy I did this project let me know out of these 25 what your favorites were and what you thought about them I would love to hear and that's all I have. As always, thank you so much for watching and have a good day. Bye.